with the main chip watch. It's real talk. Man, it's real talk with your main chip Washington. When it comes to information, the main got an arsenal. Bring you up to speed with what you need. He's the local and nationwide news feed. Let's talk about it. Dialect to do something about it. Chip got the flow wide open if you got questions about it. Man, it's the show that brings you to your raw. To solve all problems, it starts with real talk. It's real talk. And here we go. Here we go on this wet, rainy, chilly Monday evening in the city. It is November 20th, the week heading into Thanksgiving, uh, six o'clock straight up, which means it is time rain or shine or anything else weather related. We are here uh, and this is Real Talk Memphis. Glad to be here with you this evening. Glad to be in the air chair. Uh, glad you're out there as well. I know you're out there somewhere uh, for uh, another edition of uh, our show tonight. Uh, we hope that uh, uh, before it's all said and done, you uh, sit, sit back, relax, and get out of the rain, get comfortable around your your uh, your phone or, or whatever device it is you use to listen to us, whether it's the radio, whether it's online, whether it's Facebook, whether it's TuneIn. We're on all of those. So uh, we hope that you uh, sit back and enjoy the ride for the next uh, 60 minutes or so. I'm your humble host. My name is Chip Washington. I'm sitting over here. If you're watching us on Facebook Live, you can see me waving to you out there uh, in uh, in computer land. Uh, we have a good show for you tonight, we think. Uh, and uh, there's always uh, plenty to talk about. Uh, but before we get into all of that, uh, I sort of alluded to it at the beginning. Uh, how you can find this fine piece of radio broadcasting many, many ways. Uh, we are live right now on your radio, 91.7 on your FM dial, WYXR. You can also catch us on the WYXR app. We are on the TuneIn app as well, and uh, we're going to be on Facebook Live uh, this evening. And when the show is posted uh, tomorrow or uh, next couple of days, you can catch us on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Very good. Got all that out the way. Feeling good about things. So we have a good show for you tonight. Uh, we'll be speaking with uh, Amy Kalb uh, and Cache Brooks. Uh, these two young ladies work uh, for uh, the Division of Community Services for Shelby County Government, uh, the Youth and Family Resource Center uh, in specific. And this is uh, uh, an agency or an area within government there that helps families and young people who have committed low-level crimes and basically gives them another opportunity uh, before this goes on a permanent record. It, they, they, this organization, uh, this, this, this group here, uh, helps them in terms of that. Uh, it's a two-strike program, basically. If you, if you commit a low-level crime and uh, you know, you're reported to them by a police precinct, uh, then you get a chance to sort of redeem yourself. If you uh, go twice, that's your last chance. But we'll talk with them about uh, this uh, program, and we'll see if it helps uh, some of these young folks who may have lost their way out here. Uh, a little bit later on in the broadcast, we, we will be speaking with County Commissioner Charlie Caswell. Of course, he is a good friend of this uh, broadcast, and I uh, wanted to bring him in because uh, we all know about the escalating crime problem that we have. We're in a crime crisis here in Memphis. I don't think there's any doubt about that or anybody would have any questions about that. Uh, well, it hit pretty close to home for him. Uh, by respects of his daughter, uh, who was involved in a very harrowing situation uh, about a week or, or so back. And uh, he's going to talk with us about that. And of course, uh, you know, how we deal with this crime situation as we continue to deal with uh, more and more situations each and every day. And a bit later on in the broadcast, the second half hour, good friend, uh, Brian Harris, a.k.a. Red Fox. And Brian uh, is... Uh, 
is a is a community leader. And he's always out there whenever uh, there is something uh, involving the community and the needs of the community. Each and every year, he helps out uh, during the Thanksgiving holiday uh, with food and a lot of other things. Well, there's going to be a bit of a change. You know how each and every year uh, they normally have a feed uh, for the homeless uh, on Thanksgiving Day. Well, they won't be doing that this year, but they will be doing other things leading up to it. And Brian, uh, always involved, will give us the lowdown on that. So there is your program for this evening. Now, uh, if you are celebrating a birthday today or you celebrated one over the weekend, you have one coming up this week. This is your time of the show. This is where we do the world famous shout out right here on Real Talk Memphis. But we can't do that until I tell Brian, hit it, my man. Lola slowly eases her way to the microphone. Happy birthday is going out to the following. Christy Smith celebrating today. Rosemary Leverson Moore celebrating her birthday today, as is Margie Griffin, Shandalyn Davis, Snow B. Sharon, Ty F. celebrating today, and Diane Holcomb. Lola. Happy birthday to Francesca Sanders, who celebrated on this past weekend. Happy 45th. And also happy 45th to my best friend since high school, Lena Conacero. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Lola's friends, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and by the way, if you if you listen to her, she, you know, her show proceeds mine on Monday evenings. Level Lola. Boy, she was rocking the box uh, right before we came on the air. I was in here just grooving. No, you don't need to see that. that I'm just that, you just take my word for it. That's what that's what I was doing. <laughs> Happy birthday to each and every one of you. I hope it's been a day filled with fun, love, and laughter. And we hope to be with you next year to celebrate your next trip around the sun. Thank you, Bryn. Okay, so uh, in news and notes, uh, all of us are very aware of what happened on Saturday evening when a a man who had a uh, history of domestic violence shot five people, uh, he killed four of them, uh, and then later on uh, in that night, he uh, turned the gun on himself and killed himself. This man killed a, a family members. Uh, he killed his sister and his sister's uh, child uh, and her grandchild, and uh, then he turned uh, and went to where his ex-wife was. He killed his ex-wife as well. He shot another uh, one of his nieces, uh, but she uh, has a at, to this point, still survived all of that. So five people shot, four people dead, uh, you know, uh, in, a, in a terrible, terrible act of a domestic violence. Mavis Christian Jr. Uh, is, the, uh, is the individual's name who uh, perpetrated these crimes. I don't mention these folks uh, very often, but, you know, this is a, a classic example of someone who has been in the system uh, for a very long time, De- going back to 2007, uh, as if you've been watching the news and you've been hearing about all of the, his history, uh, going back to 2007, uh, second degree murder charges, aggravated assault way back then. Uh, back in 2018, he assaulted his wife. Uh, he hit her several times, knocking her out. Uh, when her children uh, grabbed a bat to try to stop him, he grabbed a bat and continued to be his wife and his children as well. Uh, just a bad guy all the way around. Uh, a, a big failure uh, in the criminal justice system. Uh, domestic violence, uh, as we talk about on this show and we have many times before, is no joke. Uh, there are more instances of this that are happening these days than almost e- ever before. And once again, I will just say, I will paraphrase this to say that nobody needs to be a victim. And if you find yourself in a situation like that, there are always recourses and there are always people that you can talk to about uh, situations like this that you don't have to be in. So, again, we mourn uh, the loss of all of these individuals uh, and we are praying for uh, the remainder of the family uh, and the friends and the colleagues of all of this. Uh, May their memories uh, be a blessing. Just a terrible, terrible situation. Uh, that happened on Saturday evening. By the way, uh, no surprise to anyone, Memphis has set a new homicide record uh, with what happened over the weekend and uh, triple shooting this morning, by the way. 352 is where we're at right now. 352 homicides, which broke last year's record, which broke the year before that's record. So, you know, it's, it's not getting any better. It's getting a lot worse. And we do have to pay attention, and we do have to keep our antenna up, and we do have to watch our surroundings, absolutely, no doubt about that. 
Governor Lee has uh, made the announcement that he is sending 40, or has sent 40, uh, Tennessee Highway Patrol troopers uh, to our city and our county to help with public safety. Uh, he is going to send an additional 15 to 20 more next Monday, which means we'll have somewhere about 50, 55 uh, 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 of those officers, uh, maybe 60. Uh, they're going to handle uh, what is being deemed uh, to kind of uh, allow the Memphis Police Department uh, to handle other issues while they handle issues on the highway and, and things like that. So if you see an abundance of uh, THP troopers around, uh, you'll know why. Uh, there'll be plenty of them around here uh, for the next uh, couple of weeks and until moving forward. There is no, like, up, up until when. They're just here right now. Uh, and and because of the situation is so bad here uh, moving forward. So we will keep an eye on that situation as well. Uh, there. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, I forgot to, to mention this. Uh, we had a, a death uh, yesterday, Rosalind Carter, uh, former first lady, uh, wife of uh, former President Jimmy Carter. Uh, she, she died yesterday. She transitioned at the age of 96. Uh, they were married for 77 years. Uh, and uh, just the sweetest couple ever. Uh, and, um, you know, now he's, uh, Jimmy Carter is 99, and he's still with us. Uh, and uh, I don't know, we'll see how long that lasts now that his, uh, that his mate uh, for, for his whole life uh, is now transitioned. But uh, Rosalind Carter did at the age of 96. Uh, congratulations going out to Pearl Walker. Uh, and Jerry Green, uh, who was along with uh, Michael and Easter Thomas, so won the runoff elections last week. Uh, this is seven women now uh, in the city council. I think that's the most ever uh, since they've been doing the mayor uh, uh, council form of government. So congratulations to, to them. And yes, before you ask, they will be on this show. I will have both of them on this show at uh, a time appropriate uh, pretty soon now. Uh, and uh, the Memphis uh, Tigers football team lost over the weekend to SMU. That was a big game uh, that we were hoping that we would win to go to the conference championship, but that is not going to happen. Uh, I was actually at that game, and it was a very, very, very good game, by the way. Uh, well played, but we lost, and that is it. And before I go, and before we get this thing started, I want to thank Shelby County government uh, once again. Uh, I was awarded uh, one of the Shining Star awards uh, from uh, Mayor Lee Harris uh, over the weekend at the uh, Christmas tree lighting uh, at, uh, at in, in Soulsville. Uh, and that was a very, very nice little ceremony they had. And I just want to say thank you again publicly to Lola. Lola actually came out to support. I really, really appreciate that, uh, as did uh, so many other folks. And thank you again, Shelby County. Thank you again, Mayor Lee Harris, uh, for that, that award. I'm very humbled. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, let's uh, kick this show off. What do you say on uh, this wet and rainy Monday evening? Settle in, relax, sit back, and listen to us on Real Talk Memphis. A quick break. We'll be right back. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. Hueys is proud to support WYXR. Established in 1970 with 10 locations, Huey's menu includes burgers, sandwiches, and more. More information at HueyBurger.com. Support for WYXR comes from Culver Accounting. Full service for audit, WYXR tax, comes accounting, from Culver and consulting accounting. firm. Full service the audit, tax, more information at ColverCPA.com. More information at ColverCPA.com. 
Acoustic Sunday Live, now in its third decade. Acoustic is proud Sunday to Live, WYXR. now in its third decade. Is proud to support WYXR. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 3rd. Taking place at 7 p.m. on
really divert them from the juvenile justice system. And of course, that is a very uh, important component. Uh, now, I know that, that this is a two prong uh, kind of a you, it's, it's a it's a two chance system. Uh, you know, basically, uh, you know, they commit a low level offense. Uh, they refer to you by uh, the police department. And that's when you all sort of take over. Uh, now, Cache, uh, one of the uh, aspects, one of the big aspects of all of this uh, is a mental health component uh, that is going to be added uh, to your uh to your area sometime next year. Tell us a little bit about that because you're going to be kind of over that. Am I correct? Yeah, it's correct. So uh, my title is Youth Mental Health Coordinator and my role is essentially to coordinate a program that's going to offer young people in Shelby County free individual and group therapy. Um, <clears throat> but also a, a big part of that is making sure that the young people feel comfortable and empowered to use the resource. Um, so we um, have been doing a couple of things to make sure that happens. We recently have done a, a youth voice survey to kind of get their feedback and thoughts about therapy. And we've also done a couple of focus groups. Um, but the whole premise is to make sure that it is simple and accessible for young people to get connected. And that really is, uh, that that's the key, simple and, and accessible. And you know, you like to use the term, meeting them where they are. And I, I, you know, we hear that more and more when we're talking about our young people and the disconnect that they may feel. How important is meeting them where they are, uh, especially when you're trying to talk to them or talk through some issues that they may be dealing with? Yeah. So, I mean, the, the expectation that sometimes that we have as adults is that, you know, we want them to think like we think or to act and function, and operate like we do. Um, but they're obviously a, a, a very different place. Um, they're still learning. Their brains are still developing. So keeping all of that in mind where we're having conversations with young people um, and really being intentional and thoughtful about the way that we interact um, and doing our best not to be judgmental um, so that they can and will open up to us um, so we can kind of get a better understanding of what's going on. Uh, Amy, in terms of all of this, uh, from the parent uh, perspective, uh, you know, many kids, uh, you know, get to be a certain age, they get to be teenagers, and all of a sudden they think they have all of the answers uh, to life's issues and, and everything else, and they, and they do more talking and then they do listening. How valuable, simple question, but but it has a, it's just some complexities to it, I think, uh, in terms of the parent aspect of things, how beneficial is it? for them to have this resource, uh, to be able to utilize this resource, uh, to be able to help them? Because a, a lot of parents may be at their wits end with their young people uh, from time to time. Yep, exactly. And and I think that's the beauty of the program is that we're, we're here just as much for the parents as we are for the youth. Um, what we find over and over again is these parents that we, we see, they want the very best for their kids. Um, and they there's so much strength in the families and but like you say, they're at their wits end, they need help. Um, and they've, they've identified that a lot of times in their youth, that something is happening, maybe their friend group isn't um, on the right track or something, and they just want help and they want guidance and they wanna know where they can turn in their community for help. And so I think that's what is so beautiful about the YFRC is that we are here to connect those parents. Yeah, absolutely that. And you know, I, I was thinking about that, that, that connectivity uh, Cache in terms of uh, in your particular area and in, in the mental health aspect. I mean, let's 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 face it. Uh, you know, a lot of kids at a certain age, as I just mentioned, uh, there's a bit of a disconnect uh, between uh, when they were little and they pay, they paid a lot of attention to their parents and carrying on, and then you get to a certain age as teens, and they feel like they have all the answers and we don't know anything. Uh, but that really is a key critical to me, anyway, a key critical component uh, in what you do in specific in your in your particular area of all of this. Because a lot of times kids will tell you, the first thing they'll tell you is, uh, you know, they don't listen to me. My parents don't listen to me. They don't feel, they feel very disconnected, but they feel connected with uh, like-minded kids out there on the streets and in the schools and in a lot of other things. That's why it is so important uh, to remove uh, the barrier and really kind of evoke uh, a bit of trust uh, in, in being able to, to talk to you, correct? Exactly, exactly. Um, I think, you know, that, that open dialogue is really important. So anytime that we're working with a young person or the or the caregiver, we're letting them know that like, we're not here to put blame or to judge about whatever the situation is. We're trying to build, create some solutions. Um, so figuring out ways that we can move forward and making sure that the parent and the young person 
have that open dialogue and can have those conversations that, you know, that needs to be had. Yeah, yeah, and I and I, I agree with that 100%. Amy, now we talked about the fact that this is really a, a sort of a two-chance uh, program. So if a child goes through this and and they go through whatever, however long the session, and how, are these sessions, uh, is there a particular length of time that they go? How does that work exactly? So basically when they come in with their, their caregiver, they both are, take part in an assessment and then an action plan is developed. And that action plan has steps as far as different resources and services that we want them to engage in. Right. And so our youth advocates are instrumental in helping them get connected um, and getting that warm handoff to that um, that service provider. And our youth advocates then are available to follow up and case manage with that youth and that family um, approximately for about six months, mm. just to make sure that they got connected with the services they need, that a new need hasn't you know, arisen that we need to then find another resource for, or to make sure that that resource we've connected with them is a good fit um, for that family. So if, if, uh, if uh, you know, after a certain period of time, uh, you know, you find that uh, you, you, you've gotten a report that uh, this child maybe has committed another uh, offense of some type and, and they have been uh, forwarded to you, uh, what happens from that point on the second yeah, time? So if, so if they have another one of those low-level offenses, and when we're talking low-level offenses, we're talking curfew, vandalism, things like that. Mm -hmm. If they have another one of those, they are eligible to come back through our program again. We do a more comprehensive screening with them that second go round, um, and then really we're we're gonna you know really focus in and, and hone in on um, you know what services did they take part in, what additional services might they need, um, and really work to to make sure we're getting them connected exactly where they need to be connected. That is, uh, this is a very uh, valuable program, I think, uh, and and something that we desperately need at this time. Uh, we know that uh, there's they're, they're not a big population of, of uh, young people going astray. It's a small population that are committing the majority of the crimes. But if we can reach and teach one of these uh, you know, individuals uh, one person at a time uh, and counsel one family at a time, maybe we can sort of uh, put a, a curb on this. Amy, if you will, before we go, please let people who have never heard of the program, who may want more information about it, please give them all of the contact information they need, please. Certainly. So we are located in the Raleigh area. We're in the old um, public library building at 3157 Powers Road. People can walk in and set up appointments with us. They can call us at 222-4320, or they can visit the Shelby County uh, webpage. And if you put in the Youth and Family Resource Center or just actually search for the Youth and Family Resource Center, you're going to find our page. And right away, there's a big referral link and that the parent or the youth can click that referral link, put in their information, and we get back to them the very next business day. And typically, we can get you in within about two business days mm. and have you seen by one of our youth advocates. Well, that's that's that really is wonderful. And uh, I would I would strongly urge uh, parents out there who may be uh, listening to this program. Uh, if you do have any more questions or you have issues with young people and you, and you need some help, uh, because every now and again, we all need help from time to time. This uh, uh, Shelby County Youth and Family Resource Center program could be for you. Amy Cab, Cache Brooks, thank you both for coming on the show tonight and uh, speaking with us about something that is very, very important to our community. Uh, we wish you all the best. And if there's anything uh, that we can do to help you promote uh, anything you have coming up, please don't hesitate to let me know. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. You guys have a great evening and, and have a happy Thanksgiving and be safe out there. OK. You as well. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. Uh, Youth and Family Resource Center, Shelby County government uh, is trying to help. Uh, because Lord knows that a lot of us need help, especially with our young people these days. And if you can uh, put them in a program or provide a resource or an opportunity to keep them uh, from stepping off a curb in the wrong way uh, and, uh, you know, hitting these streets and listening to folks that they shouldn't be listening to uh, and uh, getting themselves in trouble uh, that they don't need to get into, this organization is what you need to uh, pay attention to and look up if you need that help because they are here to help. We're going to take another break. 
And when we come back, uh, we're going to continue our conversation on this Monday edition of uh, Real Talk Memphis. I was going to say something uh, before we went to break, and I just completely lost it. But that happens when you become a senior. Anyway, <laughs> no com- no comments from Lola or Bryn. Yeah, yeah, I-, I hear you over there in the corner. Anyway, this is Real Talk Memphis. I'm Chip. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be, be- and we will be right back. Don't go away. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. WYXR supported by Mempho presenting American Aquarium with special guest Lance Roark at Minglewood Hall on Sunday, December 10th. Ticket information and availability at MemphoPresents.com. WYXR is supported by Memphis. WYXR presenting is supported Jazz's Dead by Memphis. Presenting Hall Jazz's on Dead at Minglewood Hall on Ticket Wednesday, December 13th. Ticket Wednesday, information and availability at MemphoPresents.com. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. Yes, Chip. And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this Monday evening. Chip Washington with you. And, uh, uh, you know, of course, uh, you know, as always, we were talking about it uh, during the break. You know, Thanksgiving will be here in just a few days. And uh, many folks are gearing up, getting ready for that. It'll be a short week, no doubt about that. A lot of folks may be in maybe tomorrow, uh, you know, and after that, off for the remainder of the week. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we wish you uh, a, a wonderful holiday season. We'll do more of that at the end of the broadcast. But, uh, we continue now, and uh, as I alluded to at the uh, top of the show, uh, Charlie Caswell uh, is not only a friend of this show, uh, but he is uh, one of our county commissioners. Uh, he is a community activist, a community leader. He's a pastor, and he genuinely cares about uh, our, our community. Uh, and we've been talking about the fact that crime uh, is a major issue that all of us, uh, none of us can escape. Uh, and I wanted to have him on the show, and he was so gracious to come on tonight uh, to talk about a situation uh, that hit very close to home. But first and foremost, uh, uh, welcome Charlie Caswell, uh, my friend, to the show. Uh, I see you look like you got everything straightened out there. You 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 good now? <laughs> yes, sir. We good. Can you hear me? I got you, man. I got you. I got you. Thank you so much for coming on, Charlie. As as, as always. Uh, so so listen. I, I know uh, every time something happens uh, out here. Uh, you know, in a sad way, be it the events that happened on Saturday night, uh, uh, be it this morning, a triple shooting, uh, and, and, and so many other uh, issues of concern that you all deal with as elected officials, uh, one never thinks, or at least one hopes and prays, uh, that uh, it doesn't touch them personally, but uh, crime in this city uh, has uh, touched you in a very personal way. And for those people who don't uh, know about it, I'm sure a lot of people do, tell us what happened, uh, if you don't mind, in reference to your daughter? Yeah, uh, again, thanks a lot, Chip, uh, for all that you do and helping getting the, the word out to the community about so much great things that are happening and, and those things, unfortunately, that, that do happen, such as what happened this past Sunday uh, while my my daughter was leaving the office there. Uh, for those who know, she's the executive director of Legacy of Legends Community Development Corporation and the Frazier community. She noticed after a while that she was being told that she moved back and forth in traffic and when she got over to the Raleigh community, uh, she said, well, let me kind of go to come towards my house uh, as she was noticing this car behind. And then she turned there on the intersection of Scenic Highway uh, off New Island. The car just swam in front of her and then hit her from the side, made her spin out. 
and she knew then that something some danger alert there. So she knew the fire department was right down the street here uh, on St. Highway, and she flew to the fire department, mm. got there in front of it, laid on a horn, hoping that someone would come out. And again, uh, to the fire firemen, I don't uh, blame them for not coming. So much is happening in our community. They thought something was going on outside that might have been a danger to them. So they did call the police. She didn't know they was calling the police. And the lady... Uh, uh, that was in the car, came out, started he beating on the one, was pulling on her door, trying to get her, get out the car, get out the car. And so she, in her fear, she took off across the grass, jumped the curb, was able to get away from the lady and then made it to my home. And so, you know, just for me as a father and, and just knowing, again, being in the public eye and doing this work for so long, I received my share of threats from people not happy with votes that I may have done. Mm. It just automatically, like, who could have been following my daughter, what this was all about. So it was terrifying for me, but even more terrifying for her. You have been uh, you have been a, an advocate uh, for such a, a long time out here and uh you know every time i something happens and i i just i i struggle to try to figure out exactly what is going on but uh this is a father's worst nightmare uh to know that his child uh had to go through something like that i did see an interview with her on the news uh, uh she was very uh i mean to be able to be uh, calm in the midst of a storm, uh, so to speak, uh, as she was, and she handled it uh, to the best of, of, of her ability. And when she talked about it on, on the back end, you know, I, 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 could, I, could, I could hear you all in her. I mean, I think that you, you know, as a parent, you raise your children uh, to, to be careful and to be observant and to watch out. But, but, but even for you and, 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 and your wife and, and the remainder of the family, this had to be a, just a terrifying uh, situation all the way around. Yeah, I, I just tell you, as you say that, Chip, you know, my daughter's been working with me prior to me becoming county commissioner almost five years in mm. this work in the streets. Uh, she had went in some of the worst situations. You know, we work around a lot with children who've been impacted by diverse childhood experiences. Yeah. And those experiences is our physical abuse, emotional abuse, physical neglect, emotional neglect. When we go into these homes, we uh, identify and be in there with many of these families because I grew up in poverty, grew up in trauma, witness and friends killed in front of me as a as a child. My, my daughter knew this. And so the, when she took on this job as executive director, she knew she was doing this in the second uh, most poorest, the poorest zip code in Chevy County, 38127 in the Fraser community. She knew that this was number one of the one most dangerous uh, neighborhoods uh, in Chevy County. So she understands the risk because, again, our job have been to go into these homes and try to save our families uh, by addressing that trauma that many of them for generation dealt with. So uh, that's why I can uh, credit it. Thanks be to God, but a lot of that pours to her training on the job. You know, uh, we we every day uh, we we hear something uh, sad and tragic that goes on in our cities. Uh, you've been in these streets, uh, as you said, for decades, uh, trying to understand, trying to figure out where things are. Uh, you know, we don't want to put uh, all the focus and blame on young people because there's a very small percentage of young people that are committing uh, most of these heinous crimes out here. A lot of us know that, uh, but um, I mean. Charlie, when you, I mean, even for you uh, as a county commissioner and you and you deal with uh, so much, uh, you know, on the political side uh, uh, of things, is there anything we can do? Is there anything? What I mean, what can we do? I mean, how do because, you know, as well as I do, people are afraid. People are scared. Uh, people are unsure of what is going on out here uh, in the streets. And, and we set a new homicide record uh, this year. Again, 353 uh, broke last year's record, which broke the year before that's record. Uh where are we going, Charlie? Where are we going? Yeah. Uh, sa sadly, uh, Chip, I, I just say this is that when we look at where we are right now, this is been, this is didn't just happen, right? This has been decades and uh, and generation of, of unaddressed traumatic experiences for many individuals, and I just think that the heightened of the technology world now that many of these children see others around the country doing this. I got a call from a national uh, syndicate uh, news station the other day that said, hey, they, they robbed the Amazon truck in this city, in Nashville, they run into Gucci shops. And so they're doing it all over the country. I just got back from a conference in uh, North Carolina a couple of weeks ago with black commissioners all over the country. Mm. And I'm hearing them talk about these stories back to back as if it was Memphis. 
I was in New Orleans a couple of, uh, couple of days before flying to North Carolina, and the district attorney in, North, in New Orleans was carjacked with his mama in the car. So it's not Memphis, it's a mentality. And sadly, I say I attribute many, much of that mentality, yes, to, to un, uh, many parents that were traumatized that didn't address their trauma. So they hurt, they passed in that hurt on to their children, and that hurt is being passed on to our community and city. So in, in short, I say it's going to take all of us. We can't look at just the politicians, policymakers. We can't just look at the police. We can't just look at the principals. We can't just look at the pastors. It's going to take the parents, the pastors, the police, the politicians, the proudest, the principals, all of us partnering together to bring about the real change that we need in this county. I just, uh, you know, and I hear what you're saying. <clears throat> and one of the things that you say all the time, and it, it resonates in my head, hurt people hurt people. Uh, and and this is and this is a classic example. It seems to be a classic example uh, of that particular thought. But you know, <clears throat> in terms of the galvanizing of all of us uh, as a community, all of us who live here, uh, all of us who, who shop here, all of us who who raise or try to raise our families here. Uh, you know, back in the day when we were coming up, remember the old saying: "It used to take a village to took a village to raise a child." Uh, yeah. well, a lot of, a lot of, a lot. Of, and these days, a lot of people in the villages are scared because they don't know what to expect, right. it, and they they don't, they don't open their doors to see what's going on because they're too afraid uh, to do so. Uh, do you think that we will ever get to a place where people will really rise up as a as a community? Because, like you say, uh, it's not just here in Memphis; it's all over the country. But for uh, for those of us who who live here, work here, and function here every day. You know, we live here and uh, we, yeah. we need we need to try to figure out some kind of way to stem this tide. Right. And and this is why the conversation is with us and being the culture of the legislative body is not just going to Nashville pushing for how we address this, but also in Washington, D.C., as I talk to many others, because it's going to take an all hands on the deck uh, approach to addressing something that's been decades, as I shared, shared unaddressed. So, we, yes, I believe we are. We're getting ready to stand up. I just uh, fought to put $1.5 million in the budget for district connectors. That would be individuals, what I call them champions, in each of our county commission district. Their job is going to galvanize, bring the community, the stakeholders together, put together a public safety plan with a public health approach that's hearing from all seven P's that's getting them all in the room that's them networking and building those collaborations and relationships that is going to take to bring that unity back to our community and to our district when they told me nothing good could come out of Frazier it told us rather in 2008 when I was when I bought 26 houses for like a dollar piece in Frazier now you look at Frazier today even though sadly we are seeing what we're seeing because I and I contributed a lot of it to when we went into the uh, pandemic, into that silo uh, chip, uh, what the evidence and research showed us before we went into the pandemic was that we were in an epidemic, meaning that many of these children were already dealing with that trauma. And, and working with the University of Tennessee, what that showed us was children that experienced 10 or more days missing from school, I meaning they was absent from school, chronic absenteeism. Right. They had higher adverse childhood score. Well, take this. They missed two years of school, sitting in physical abuse, emotional abuse, physical neglect. And ever since then, 2020, 2021, 2022, we have seen the roof get blown off the top of this uh, trauma uh, that's been unaddressed. And we went back to school and thinking we can do business as usual, saying, where your number two pencil? And these children said, you ain't asked what happened to me. You ain't asked about my molestation. Mm. You ain't asked about the death in my family. You ain't thinking about my emotional I mean so therefore they're going out here and just acting out for the attention that many of us as the ducks fail to give them I tell you what man uh there are days when uh, you know I think uh, for all of us we just become discouraged I've never seen you uh, ever, ever in that in that mode because uh, you know how important all of this is uh, and uh, we we need to get back to, to something as we as we round uh, the corner on this year which has been a terrible year and we start off uh, in 2024 with a brand new mayor, uh, brand new city council. Uh, we also need to start off with some hope uh, and some encouragement, my friend. Uh, uh, am I right about that? Most definitely. Most definitely. You know, one of the things for me, uh, Chef, you know, uh, I and again, you may not see this for those who follow me on, on social media, too, on my page. And but they, they'll see it on my county commission page, as I shared it there and some other uh, pages that I have. But. 
I blacked out from social media, right? Not going to Facebook, not focus on that. Really, uh, it, the Bible tells us it's come a time when this only going to come out through fasting and prayer. It's like one of the things is we got to humble ourselves with our egos, thinking we have all the answer by ourselves. And, and pray that two or three of us gather in, in agreement that God who control, who is over all and sees all, where grace is, where sin is abounding, that he would allow grace to abound the more. And so I believe, yes, this can be turned around uh, because I, again, started in a community where we we saw the lords of the lords, but now we're seeing houses now a hundred and forty thousand dollars you know my home i stay in the community here went up over a hundred some thousand dollars in equity i seen brand new community centers building brand new libraries building just voted to put a brand new 21st century school over a hundred million dollars mm. into that Frazier community mm. where kids can have the hope of seeing the same thing that children in college are exposed to, they can now have that hope and, and be aspiring because that is happening in their community. So we're not giving up. I believe in where you, you the worst communities are. When I was coming out of Dixon Home, uh, it was those mentors and those people who didn't give up on me told me that I was going to come out of this community better than I was in it. And God did it for me. I believe he'll do it in this city for us. Well, that is the perfect point to end this and and, and say amen, uh, by the way. Charlie Caswell, County Commissioner, uh, pastor, teacher, uh, preacher, community activist, my friend. Thank you so much. And uh, from all of us here, man, uh, you know, give our sincere, you know, prayers. And, and we're so thankful and grateful uh, that uh, that no harm beset your daughter, even though she went through a very difficult uh, time. Uh, you know, we're always uh, pulling for, 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 for everybody in this town, we're definitely pulling for you and everybody else. Charlie, thanks for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Thanks, thanks a lot, Chef. And I can say one thing. My daughter, the first week in December, she's going to Houston. She graduating from a university. She still was finishing school through this process, and she's getting a social degree and business management. So I want to send a shout-out to Tierra. Absolutely thanks. that, man. Uh, kudos and congratulations to her uh, from, from me and all of us here. Charlie, you take care of yourself, man. Uh, uh, stay Thank up, you, uh, stay strong, and we will talk. we will talk down the road. Bless you, sir. You All too, right. man. Thank you, man. Uh, Charlie Caswell, ladies and gentlemen, and 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 again, uh, you know, uh, it's one thing to to see and hear about all of the crime and issues that are dealing we deal with on a daily basis, but uh, when you go through it personally, uh, it does uh, affect and change you. But it sounds like uh, his daughter uh, is a very strong uh, young woman, uh, and and clearly, uh, you know, has his vibe uh, inside her. We'll take our final break of the show, and when we come back, uh, we will uh, finish up uh, for this. Uh, Rainy Monday evening. The rain will stop at some particular point. I hope it stops on my way home because it was a mess coming down here. Oh, <laughs> enough of that. Uh, quick break. It will be right back. Uh, don't go away. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. This is Anita Ward, here to tell you a bit about my alma mater, Russ College, which supports the music of the Mid-South through its partnerships with WYXR. I've been known for singing since my days on campus, and I continue to sing Russ College's praises. Did you know Russ College offers 23 plus majors? Two new ones will be implemented this fall, Forensic Science and Religious Studies. For more information on admissions, enrollment, and activities, visit russcollege.edu. University of Memphis Department of Theater and Dance presents their fall faculty dance concert, Chroma, a compilation of choreographed works by University of Memphis dance faculty and guest artists, turning an intensified lens on the varying colors of life and every season we encounter. Chroma runs November 16th through the 18th at 7.30 p.m. in the Edward and Bernice Humphreys Theater Building on Central Avenue. More information can be found at memphis.edu slash theater. Hey, ever get lonely without WYXR? Lonely? 
I've got my cat. Well, now you can have WYXR too, right in your pocket. Listen live, explore past archives, and follow us on social media. It's like a radio party and everyone's invited. Even my cat? Especially your cat. Plus, you'll get up to the minute station updates. It's like having a personal DJ that doesn't scratch your furniture. Sounds perfect. Hold on, I'm downloading it right now. Join the fun and never miss a beat with WYXR. Download the WYXR app today from the Apple App Store or Google Play and bring the party wherever you go. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this rainy Monday evening. Chip with you and uh, hope that you are with us. Uh, uh, say hello to all the folks on the Facebook Live line. I see uh, Michael Harris is with us tonight, Joyce Franklin Smith and Patricia Rogers. Patricia is everywhere. I think Patricia actually clones herself. You know, she does this PR, you know, she's she's a, a maestro with the PR and she's at every event that is happening in this town. I, mean, I don't know how she does as much as she does. Uh, Faye Riley is checking us out as is Connie Mae. Hey, Connie Mae. Maquita Jones Williams and Maquita, I saw on your Facebook post that you just celebrated your one year anniversary. So happy anniversary to you and your husband, Sandy Bromley, uh, is checking us out this evening as well. Hey, Sandy, how are you? You just celebrated an anniversary too. Is everybody got hooked up right around the, <laughs> right around the same time a year ago? So happy anniversary to you. And Audrey Hill uh, is watching as well. Okay, so uh, I was supposed to have another guest. Uh, Brian uh, Harris was supposed to join me this evening. Uh, but maybe he forgot us. Maybe something happened. You know, these had things happen in life. But we were going to talk a little bit about Thanksgiving. Now, you know, each and every year, uh, the city uh, puts together this uh, big collaborative effort. Uh, a lot of community partners, a lot of churches and things like that are going to participate. Uh, we're going to normally participate in, in helping to feed the need on, on Thanksgiving Day. I did that as a volunteer for many years, and I really totally enjoyed that. Well, he told me this year the committee decided that they were going to to do it differently and they weren't going to have a feed a community feed on thanksgiving day but what they were going to do was the city uh was going to they were going to uh, collect food and give food away uh to people uh in need they were going to i think the city was going to do it today i believe the county is going to do it tomorrow uh and uh i i, I can't remember who's going to do it the third day i do know that uh that uh one of the churches um was going to uh, participate in, in, in this, uh, you know, as well. There'll be plenty of churches, no doubt. Uh, we hadn't heard a lot about that, but there are churches who are participating uh, in in gathering uh, food and, uh, you know, uh, 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 different things that people need, uh, toiletries and, 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 and gloves and, and hats and socks, socks. Very, very big deal, especially for, for the homeless folks out there. Uh, but but uh, putting all of that together uh, in, in, in various uh, places and in, in various ways. Uh, okay, uh, I have a note here. Uh, says that the city is handling uh, the distribution of boxes of groceries starting today. So this, the city did it today. Uh, and tomorrow, uh, the county uh, will be doing the same thing, distribution uh, of groceries. And you can probably call the county, uh, Shelby County government, and they can tell you, uh, you know, what you need to do in reference to that. Uh, and uh, his church uh, uh, on Wednesday uh, is doing a distribution. Gina Stewart, uh, Reverend Gina Stewart, Pastor Gina Stewart, uh, her church is feeding 500 people on Thanksgiving Day at her church. Uh, so, you know, again, uh, this time of year, uh, many of us, uh, our thoughts need to turn towards other people, uh, regardless of the situation and circumstance. And one thing I know about this city, each and every year, uh, they give 
give and give and give because, uh, you know, this is the time of year where you don't want to see people uh, suffering. And there are a lot of people here suffering. There are a lot of people here who are struggling. There are a lot of families who are struggling, who need help and who need support. So every time I see uh, a neighborhood or a community or a church or an organization, uh, I know our church did a, did a food giveaway over the weekend out of Full View Missionary Baptist Church out in Bartlett. Uh, it is time to uh, step outside of our own comfort level. It is time uh, for us to extend ourselves uh, to so many people. Uh, Memphis is a challenged city. Uh, poverty is a big issue here, and a lot of folks just don't have. Uh, and at least uh, for this time of year, with all the distribution that is happening from so many churches uh, in our community, and again, so many organizations and so many groups uh, that are doing uh, what they're doing to try to help other people uh, in terms of this season, uh, that is what it is all about. And uh, of course, uh, if you want to find out any uh, information about who's doing what out there, you can call the city of Memphis. I'm sure they can tell you and provide resources for you. Uh, you can call the Shelby County government. They can provide resources for you uh, as well. But uh, again, on Thursday, on Thanksgiving Day, there will not be a community feed. Uh, I think they did it at the Reliance Center uh, last year. But again, there'll be plenty of uh, food deliveries, grocery deliveries, and, and things like that. Uh, so as uh, you know, as we prepare to get out of here, uh, and I, th I was thinking about this earlier today, Thanksgiving is on Thursday. And, and of course, this time of year for a lot of people, uh, it's difficult uh, on many levels. Uh, emotionally, a lot of folks uh, uh, deal with uh, a loss or, uh, you know, an emotional loss, a family member, things like that, that you know, happen. Uh, where Folks all get together uh, and gather and enjoy themselves and, and then food and fun and fellowship in the, in the whole nine yards, eating too much in the whole nine yards. Uh, but but let, let us let us think about folks who are, uh, you know, who are going through emotionally. Uh, you know, I'm thinking about uh, the, the family and friends of uh, those uh, innocent women, all related, all family members that were that were needlessly slaughtered on Saturday night, uh, right right before Thanksgiving. And it's hard to to be thankful uh, when you're in the midst of planning a multiple funerals for family members uh, during uh, during this time. So. Uh, you know, uh, we need to uh, refocus our energies and our efforts uh, on uh, trying to remember uh, that all of us live in this city. Uh, and even in the midst of the challenges and even midst, in the midst of the, the, the trauma that so many people are dealing with out here, uh, we are still one city and we are still one people. And regardless of uh, the foolishness that goes on uh, in these streets, uh, we need to uh, stay centered and we need to stay focused. I, I, I subscribe to the to the argument that, you know, it's, it's not just us. It's everywhere. Uh, but at the same time, we live here in Memphis and we have we have uh, every right uh, to want to expect the best for us uh, as a people. So as Brim plays us out of here, uh, this has been a great show tonight. I really appreciate uh, the folks who chimed in. Uh, and, and again, I, I want you all to know that I'm praying for each and every one of you. I pray for us every single day in the city. Because uh, whether you choose to believe it or not, whether you have been a victim of certain circumstances or not, prayer does change things. And we need to be a praying people now more than ever before. We need to be together. We need to be focused. And we need to understand that all hope is not lost. Uh, but uh, with God, uh, we can make it through. So uh, for all of us here at Real Talk Memphis, I want to wish you all a very happy, safe, uh, and, and joyful Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, we will be back uh, next to Monday uh, after we've digested all of our food. Uh, and we will try to do this show again, uh, but just a little bit better. Lola's giving me that look. Uh, anyway, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, for Brand, for Nicole. See you later. She's a, for Brand, for Lola, for Nicole, and for me, Chip. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, each and every one of you out there. Please be safe. And until next time, we are out.